Hello and welcome to today's Transfer Express webinar, Running a T-Shirt Fundraiser. I hope everybody is having a fantastic Thursday afternoon. My name is Andy Curtis. I am the Senior Learning and Development Specialist with Transfer Express. I know what you're thinking. Why is somebody from Learning and Development presenting a webinar? Why is the human resources person, it must be bad, right, if the human resources people are presenting webinars. Well, the good news is I have been with the company for 22 years, and the first 20 of those years were spent in customer service or around customer service at Transfer Express. So I promise I have the qualifications to be here. <laughs> so welcome to today's webinar on running a t-shirt fundraiser. If you have not joined us before, welcome. We are recording this webinar. It will be posted later. Uh, as you all can see in the chat, my helper from behind the curtain is going to be here to help me keep an eye out for questions. Uh, so if you ask a question, I will try to watch it in the chat there, but sometimes you guys get really chatty and I may miss a question. Uh, and if so, my helper will answer. Uh, or if it's something that's like a long question that's going to take me away from the point of the webinar for a while, then I will let uh, I will let him answer that question instead of uh, derailing everybody. So we are going to talk about running a T-shirt fundraiser today. This is going to be a fun one. Um, this is a topic that we. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I, so I used to do all of our webinars. If, if you've been with us for a long time, then you may be going, wait a minute, I know that voice. Uh, and that's true, you, you might recognize my voice. I, I did these for a very long time. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure I did the very first Transfer Express webinars way back at the very beginning. Ooh, dating myself. Anyway, so uh, we have done this topic before a couple times in the past. This usually is a very to uh, popular topic. Um, for those of you who are sort of at the beginning of your life as a uh, t-shirt business, this might be something that you've heard about or seen people do and you just didn't know how to go about doing it. Or maybe you've tried to do a fundraiser before, but you sort of took a shot in the dark and, and didn't really know what you were doing. Uh, hopefully by the end of this 45 minutes, we are going to give you some ideas and um, some of the stuff we're going to throw out there might not work for everybody. Uh, but what we're hoping to do is kind of that, that old Italian adage, we're going to throw some pasta at the wall and some of it will stick and some of it won't. And uh, hopefully everybody gets some neat ideas uh, coming out of today, right? So if you have questions, pop them into the chat. I'll do my best to answer them. And again, yes, this is being recorded and will be posted later. So if you have to duck out, it is no harm, no foul. This will be on the website. I am glad that it is a gorgeous day in, in Virginia. Karen, it's a gorgeous day in Ohio, believe it or not, too. Um, and, and somebody write down the date because that's <laughs> that doesn't happen all the time. Um, but we're going to enjoy it while we got it, right? All right, so let's talk about the agenda. We are going to talk about popular t-shirt fundraiser causes. Uh, part of this is you needing to market yourself as a possible fundraiser. It's not like fundraisers are just gonna walk into your shop. Sometimes you actually have to market yourself that way, that you're capable of doing a fundraiser. You need to have examples. Uh, so we're gonna talk about some popular t-shirt fundraiser causes. We're gonna talk about designing the artwork. We're gonna talk about different fundraiser platforms and how to choose which one is right for you. Uh, we're going to talk about selling profit, uh, setting profit and price margins. So how do you decide how much you're giving? How do you decide how much to sell for? Um, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different ideas there. Uh, we're going to talk about marketing your fundraiser, how to go about doing that. And then we're going to talk about fulfilling orders. So we're going to cover the whole gamut here of uh, different fundraiser topics. Um, a little bit of everything, I think, uh, what we'll get to today. So uh, first and foremost... There we go. So why T-shirts? Why T-shirts? Why, why are we even having this conversation? Um, T-shirts and fundraisers go together like peanut butter and jelly, right? Everybody wears printed apparel. We all know this. This is why we're in this business, right? Everybody wears printed apparel. Everybody needs printed apparel. Uh, it's attractive to a wide audience. Fundraiser T-shirt fundraisers are easy because it's a great way to give somebody a chance. They can give to a they can give to a cause and get something physical out of it, right? Because these days everybody wants to know what do I get out of it? What do I get from it? Well, if you do this fundraiser, if you give to this fundraiser, you get a T-shirt, right? 
a sense of belonging. It unites a group. It appeals to the actual fundraiser itself, too. It appeals to the people who are uh, uh, working for whatever you're doing the fundraiser for, school or charity, 501c3 stuff, whatever. It appeals to them because they get T-shirts out of it, too. It's like a, an identification thing for them. Visible advertising, uh, and not just for the uh, people who the fundraiser is for. So let's say you're doing a fundraiser for the local children's hospital. Sure, it gets the children's hospital name out there, but you can negotiate it getting your name out there too. And we're going to cover some of that, but uh, there's no reason that uh, when you're doing you know, uh, t-shirts for a fundraiser, there's no reason you can't have your company name on the collar or on the sleeve or something like that. So this is visible advertising for everybody involved. Um, and it's a great low barrier um, uh, in terms of uh, reasonable. Uh, it's easy to, to get one of these off the ground. It's easy to do this. It doesn't take a massive investment or anything like that. We're going to go through all that money stuff here in a couple slides, but this is, it's easier than you think. There's a little bit of setup involved. I'm not going to lie. There's a little bit of setup involved with one of these fundraisers, but it's not, not quite so hairy as you might think it is. So top 10 t-shirt fundraiser causes. Now, what I want to put out there first, like I said uh, back on that uh, agenda slide, at the end of the day, you have to market yourself as somebody who can do fundraisers. So it's important for you to know this kind of stuff. Plus, uh, the other thing to put out there to you is these are the types of things you can do fundraisers for. So if you're going to approach a school, if you're going to approach, you know, maybe the local VFW or something like that, um, I, what I'm doing here is giving you ammunition for a couple different things, possibly. Um, not just ideas on different fundraisers you could do, but how to market yourself as a fundraiser. Like these are the types of things that you can advertise that you can do fundraisers for. Um, but so here's the top 10. These are the top 10 in no particular order. So schools, schools, obviously, it doesn't matter where you're from in the country, schools need money. And then sometimes you can dial this back. Sometimes it's not like the school as a whole. Maybe it's for a particular club at the school. Maybe it's for new uniforms for the football team. Um, maybe this is for new equipment for the baseball team, whatever it might be, you know, or maybe it is for the school as a whole. But regardless, the point is schools are a great place to start with fundraisers, teams too. And uh, this doesn't need to be a school team. This can be a travel team. Um, there are travel sports teams all over the place, uh, and they certainly need money. They may need to do a fundraiser of some kind or another. Medical research is a popular cause here lately as well. You see medical research fundraisers. Disaster relief, animal whale welfare, um, hunger slash poverty relief. That's a popular one environmental conservation, mental health awareness, arts and culture, and veteran support. So in no particular order, these are the top 10 t-shirt fundraiser causes. So again, the ammunition for you here is for you to keep these types of things in mind. If you want to go out and secure some fundraiser business, these are the types of things to watch for. Or uh, if you're going to market yourself as somebody who can do a fundraiser, these are the types of things you can have in your back pocket, things that you can do fundraisers for. And we're going to talk about artwork. We're going to talk about price and cost and, and the amount of money you donate. And we're going to talk about all that in the next upcoming slides. But first, I thought we'd start off with just some getting getting the creativity centers of your brains going, get those creative juices flowing. Um, these are the topics that are the 10 most popular, right? And, and if you walk around at any fair or local event, odds are pretty good you're going to see people wearing t-shirt fun, uh, fundraiser t-shirts for different things like this, right? Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to see a whole bunch of the poverty relief, hunger, and hunger. Um, I, I was just at a fundraiser for... Um, Oh gosh, uh, they they called it "Kids Eat Free," um, and and the funny part is a lot of these fundraiser T-shirts, people are getting creative with these designs, and it's not just you know oh, okay, it's a plain T-shirt, one color, blah blah blah, boring stuff. They're getting creative with the designs, they're getting creative with the slogans. I, I think people are beginning to realize that if we can come up with a T-shirt that's got some kind of creative slogan on it. Um, some kind of unique piece of artwork. That's what's going to make people want to buy it. That's going to make our fundraiser do even better, right? Uh, but we will talk about all that in the next upcoming slides. So those are the popular t-shirt fundraiser causes. So let's talk about tips for creating a uh, fundraiser artwork. All right. So let's say that you have an opportunity. Let's talk about how to go about creating that artwork. What are the things you need to watch for? And I've got a couple slides on this topic. So number one, create a clear message. 
People need to understand what the fundraiser is for. It's all well and good to have a creative idea. If you've got some idea for a creative piece of artwork, that's great. That's great. As long as you don't get so creative at out in left field that people don't understand what it's for. Remember, at the end of the day, you still need to have a clear message about what this fundraiser is for. What are you raising money for? All right. So be creative and clever with your message and all that, but make sure your message is clear. Right. Know your audience. It, understand who this fundraiser is for and who are the people you're going to be marketing to for this fundraiser because it helps to understand right if you're if it's a fundraiser and you're going to be aimed at gen z and you're going to be aimed at a younger audience then okay it's going to behoove you to make sure you have a design that's going to appeal to a younger audience but if the audience is going to be maybe baby boomers it's going to be an older audience uh, a good example of this like if you're going to do a veterans uh, a veterans day type fundraiser or a vfw type fundraiser odds are your average your average audience there is going to be a little bit on the older side right but if you're going to do, um, maybe it's uh, uh, you're going to appeal to the younger crowd, you're going to do some kind of animal welfare, animal rights type fundraiser, that type of thing. You know you have a different crowd than if you were doing a VFW type fundraiser. So the point is to know your audience and understand who the people are that you're talking to. We're going to treat them different, right? We're going to do different artwork. We're going to talk to them differently. Eye-catching visuals, very important. Remember, there's a sea of t-shirts out there. you got to do something to make your stand out. Make it unique and memorable somehow. So pull out those cr crazy, clever artwork ideas. Keep an eye out. I, that's my favorite thing. Watch what other people do and keep an eye on other the things that other people do and shamelessly borrow. <laughs> shamelessly borrow um, uh, ideas and stuff. Uh, and then test and get feedback. There is nothing wrong with going on social media and saying, hey, I have an idea for a T-shirt design. Here it is. What do you guys think of it? You know, it doesn't hurt to reach out and, and ask people, hey, what do you think of this design? What do you think of this this idea? Um, so Karen's got a, an interesting point here uh, or something worth throwing out. And this is honestly, Karen, this is a whole separate webinar topic. <laughs> um, but Karen says, I have a request for a Greek organization uh, that you're licensed with. Um, that is good for you, Karen. That's fantastic. Uh, that is a great opportunity, especially if it's like if we're talking like, like the Greek system at one of the local colleges, you can make some money off those folks. You have to be careful though, and this is where uh, Karen says she's got the license. That's the catch. So be careful when you're working with any group that has licensed artwork, uh, because copyright laws stink, and you do not want to be on the receiving end of a copyright infringement lawsuit. Um, we've done that. <laughs> we've had to do that a couple times at Transfer Express, and it's not a fun time for anybody. Nobody wants to be involved in that. So be careful uh, when you're doing fundraisers. Make sure that whatever logos, whatever artwork you're doing with your fundraiser, make sure you have permission to be using it. Um, and that's 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 a separate topic. I've we've literally I think we've done a couple of webinars on that topic. I've droned on for over an hour on that one. But so anyway, so that's tips for creating artwork. So let's go ahead and keep going on the topic. So a couple other things to think about. Um, ribbons. There is a colored ribbon for every single uh, different cause out there you could possibly think of. We've got a couple examples on the screen here. Breast cancer, childhood cancer, ovarian cancer, leukemia, prostate cancer. There is a colored ribbon for each thing. You can easily Google that topic. And we do have a ribbon clip art, X17B-530. You can pop that X17B-530 into any of our easy view designs, and it will pop that ribbon into our online designer. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. And we're going to look at the online designer in a minute here. Um, we've got a couple different categories. When you go through our pre-made artwork, we've got categories like school, sports. We even, we even have a category called fundraisers. <laughs> so uh, you can browse through all that stuff. Remember, you don't have to create the idea completely from scratch. You can jump into our online designer, take one of our ideas, then maybe that sparks an idea in you. Maybe you get an idea from it and go, oh, my gosh, you know what? I could totally take that. Uh, that ribbon and I could take a hand and maybe I put the hand inside and kind of place it with the ribbon before you know it you you've taken a design and you've made it your own you've done something clever with it so you don't have to start off with an earth shattering design if, if you do have one rock on more power to you but you don't have to start with one we can help provide those ideas to you and then remember to use our mock-up system Remember to use the mock-up system on the online designer. You can create a mock-up. You can create a design. You can put it on a t-shirt. You can see what that t-shirt will look like on somebody. And then you can download that image. Use the mock-up system. 
especially for feedback. If you put an idea together and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have the most clever idea for a breast cancer awareness t-shirt. I'm gonna make this mock-up. Everyone's gonna love it. Pop it on your social media. Lo and behold, maybe the feedback isn't fantastic. Maybe you're like, okay, I love this design. Everybody else thinks it needs to be on a different t-shirt or the colors need to be different or something to that effect. It does not hurt to get feedback before you do a fundraiser. Remember the whole idea here is you want these t-shirts to sell. So um, absolutely make use of the mock-up system for artwork. So uh, I, what I've got here is a screenshot of our EasyView online designer. And like I mentioned just a slide ago, we have an entire section of EasyView that is literally labeled fundraisers. <laughs> we make it that easy for you. And what you're looking at here, this is literally just one page of fundraisers. There's a lot more than this. Um, and you'll notice we have some artwork that is already in color uh, and then some artwork that is black and white. All of those pieces of artwork you see that are black and white, uh, those are all uh, pieces of artwork that you can go ahead and color once you get them into EasyView. Now remember, if you're doing a screen printed product, the more colors you have, the more expensive it gets. Um, if you're doing uh, a whole bunch of colors, though, of course, you can go with one of our digital products instead, um, one of our DTF products or something like that. It's all dependent upon sizing and colors and all that. We'll talk about that in a couple slides. Um, but the point is, the designs that you see here are customizable. The text, the colors, all of it. Um, you'll notice that some of these say, like, support Compton schools, that kind of thing. It's all customizable. We just have the word Compton in there or any other words that you might see we have in there as a, as a placeholder. So the whole point is you can go through these fundraiser designs, you can grab one, start with it, and then turn it into something for you. So for example, we're gonna use this, let's tackle breast cancer design, right? Now, what you're looking at here, the uh, pink football is not changeable. That part's not changeable. That's actually some Photoshopping we've done of a photograph of a real football, made it pink, all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, the text is all customizable. The let's tackle breast cancer, and you see we've customized the bottom line to say St. Edward Eagles football, right? So St. Edward Eagles football, let's tackle breast cancer. So once you've gotten the layout, once you've chosen the layout, you customize it. You change the text, you change the clip art. Uh, if we, for example, let's say we liked this idea, but we didn't like that pink football after all, like maybe there was a different football clip art we wanted to use. You can go in there and delete that pink football and pop a new football in there, not a problem. Or maybe you wanted to add another piece of clip art. I mean, you've got those big gaps on either side of St. Edward's uh, Eagles football. You could easily stick maybe a silhouette of an eagle head, the, the school's eagle head mascot or something like that. So the whole point is, <laughs> I know, right, Miosha? I see, I need this for breast cancer month. Um, we're getting there though, right? I, I, breast cancer month is coming up. So um, <laughs> keep this one in mind, I guess, right? <laughs> so um, point being that once you've got the layout chosen, Customize it however you want to, right? Put your spin on it, put your changes to it. Now, in this case, I did, we didn't make a whole boatload of changes. We're just sort of showing you the idea here to prove the point. So once you've gotten your idea put together, you've changed your text around, you've changed your clip art, you can then go to the mock-up section of EasyView and you can make a test shirt. So here's the funny part about this mock-up section is uh, not only can you use a, a whole library of stock photos that we have of people standing like this gentleman here with the yellow t-shirt, we've got a whole library of stock photos you can use. Or if you have a photo that you already took, you could go get some model of your own, stand in the backyard, take a picture of them wearing a blank t-shirt, upload that that picture into the mock-up section here, and you can plop the artwork down onto their t-shirt. The point is, liberally use this mock-up section. Now, what I find it useful for is in my head, I'm like, oh, I've got this cool design. I'm gonna put this design together. It's gonna look so good on a gray t-shirt. And then you pop it into the mock-up section. You're looking at it going, oh God, wait a minute. Okay, you know what? Second thought, doesn't look so great on a gray t-shirt, right? So what's nice about the mock-up section is not only can you create something that you can then download and show to your, your customer or show to the public or whatever, but it gives you an opportunity to understand what it's going to look like, which was always super helpful for me personally. But 
Um, so the point is here, you get to make a mock-up uh, and you can move it around on the shirt. You can change the way it looks. You can get it all put together. Super useful. So make liberal use of this mock-up section. And like I said, you can pop your own photographs in here. If you want to, if you've got a model in mind, if, if, if it's the local high school or something like that, take the star quarterback, get a picture of him wearing a plain t-shirt, pop that in here, and then boom, you can use that picture to do a mock-up with, right? Or it doesn't even have to be a model. You can have a t-shirt laying down flat someplace, but you can stage the t-shirt, stage the photograph to look the way you want. I know some of you out there are legit photographers and have some very solid ideas. So you can run wild with the fact that you can put your own photograph into the mock-up section here. Or maybe you're not a photographer. You don't want to do any of that crud. You can use our stock library of people wearing blank t-shirts like the gentleman you see here. So make liberal use of the mock-up section. Do it. All right, so let's talk about uh, what I should use and when. Because, frankly, it can be very confusing. There are a lot of products out there. There's a lot of products out there. Uh, screen printed, Plastisol transfers, Ultra Color Max, Ultra Color Pro, CAD Cut, HTV stuff. Oh, my God. What do I use and when do I use it? So this graphic is the map that tells you what to use and when. So at the top of the graph, you see we've got apparel quantity. This is how many t-shirts you're printing. All right, down the left-hand side, you see the number of colors. So based on how many pieces you have and how many colors you have, this graph, this graph tells you what to use. So if I have one color, 10 pieces, I should use HTV. If I've got like four colors, uh, four colors and, and like 50 pieces, I should use Ultra Color Pro. The number of colors, that makes sense. When you've got that many colors, you don't want to do screen print. But if I've only got, let's say, two colors, 35 pieces, that's in the area of screen print Plastisol. Two colors is easy. That's not that bad at all. Two colors you can print. It's pretty price, uh, price, um, price friendly, not prohibitive. Uh, so totally doable. So this chart, oh, and thank you, my helpers popped the uh, URL in the chat for you guys right there. So if you want to download this chart or you want to bookmark this chart, that would be the URL to click. So super useful chart to have. I, I won't lie to you all. I, I've been doing this for a very long time. And I look at this chart and I think to myself, I I wish we'd had this chart 15 years ago. <laughs> this, this makes it uh, almost too easy, almost too easy. Now, Keep in mind, too, folks, that there's going to be times that this is not completely 100% accurate. There may be times where you've got a piece of artwork that maybe it's real wonky and the customer service person uh, you talk to, maybe they suggest a different transfer type, perhaps. So there's there's times where this may not be 100% correct, but 99 times out of 100, this should nail it for you. There we go. All right, so let's talk about choosing your fundraiser platform. This is where, how, where are you going to fundraise? How exactly are you going to fundraise, right? So the first one that we've got here is an in-person event. So uh, there are tons of in-person events out there that you can fundraise at. Now, keep in mind that some of these, it, it comes down to who the organization is you're fundraising for. They may already have an in-person event lined up. Right. Like you might have a, uh, a runathon, a walkathon that's come to you and wants you to do shirts and there's already a walkathon planned. OK, so that's that's easy peasy. You know, you're going to be at an in-person event. But if you have a situation where an organization approaches you and says, hey, we want to do a fundraiser and we're looking for ideas. That's what this uh, section of the uh, of the presentation is going to speak to you on. So if you've got an in-person event that you can plan or that they can plan um, in-person event, promote where you're going to be. Right. So if you're doing in this photograph here, we've got an Alzheimer's booth that has been set up at a wellness event. Right. So this is a wellness event at a park. If you're going to be doing fundraising at that wellness event in the park, promote, promote, promote social media, your website, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. <laughs> we'll talk more about social media in a couple slides, but promote where you're going to be. Tell everybody where you're going to be and what items you're going to have. Show people the shirts, tell people where you're going to be at. Um, and depending on what the event is, make sure you know your target audience, right? So in this particular picture, this is a wellness event at a park. So if, if we've got a wellness event at a park that we're doing a fundraiser at, then I know my audience, right? I know the type of people that are going to come to a wellness event. I should make sure that the design I put together 
is a design that is going to speak to those people, right? Um, I should make sure that uh, I've got the right types of garments. So if it's a wellness event, I may be talking about people who are going to prefer garments that are a little bit breathable, right? Or maybe it's a type of event that we're going to be talking to a lot of people who are yoga and Pilates folks. And okay, maybe I should have some kind of performance where some kind of polyester stretchy thing that I should have with me. The point is to know your audience. So you've got the right targets, right? So you have the right people. Ooh, Christy, there's a suggestion. I use Google Forms to do orders. Put the design at the top and customize the questions for the group. That's slick. That is slick, Christy. You're a couple slides ahead of me, though, Christy. We're gonna we're gonna talk about a couple ideas like that in a couple slides. But that's that's slick. Make use of Google Forms, right? That's uh, a clever use of technology. I, again, something else I wish we'd had ten years ago. <laughs> Uh, so the next platform that we can discuss here is Spirit Sale or another web store. So Spirit Sale is the online platform that we use that we have made here with you at Stalls. Uh, but there are tons of other web stores out there. If you have a different web store platform that you use, the, here's the good news. When you have one of these online web stores like Spirit Sale or one of the other ones, they are easy to run. You can set up your store, your online store. You can usually have some kind of unique URL or, or, or you know, some kind of manageable URL. And here's the good news. If you do use Spirit Sale, you can create an unlimited number of stores and there's no transaction fees. So can you say easy? <laughs> Very simple stuff. Um, and the benefit is on Spirit Sale, you can actually see, uh, you've got some reporting that you can do where you can actually see how much money is made each day of the sale. So this is nice for you. This is nice for the people you're doing the fundraiser for. Very, very good stuff. And and it is 2023, folks. If you are not offering some kind of online sales option, um, it's not like it was 15 years ago, right? I, people want to buy these things on the internet. Life is busy. People are going, 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 coming, going, coming, going. They want to support your cause. They might like your t-shirt. They don't have time to come to an event. I don't have time to come to that thing you're doing in the park. I don't have time to do that. I, I can't reach out. I need to be able to go and buy that t-shirt and be done quick. <laughs> or here's the other truth, impulse purchases. Impulse purchases are a real thing. And I know some of you out there are giggling or kicking yourselves. We all have those impulse purchases where you're like, oh, I will totally support that. And you shell out 25 bucks and then the, the a t shirt or the thing shows up later and you're like, oh, that's right. I totally did support that. Right. So those impulse purchases are going to happen if you have the website set up. Right. Impulse purchases are a little bit harder to do when we're talking about in, in, in person stuff. So. Um, having spirit sale or some other kind of web store is very important. And there is a link. Uh, my helpers popped a link into the chat. If you want to know more about spirit sale, you want to see spirit sale. Maybe you don't have a, an online platform yet. We would love to talk to you about spirit sale. Click that link and go get some more information. Social media. Uh, so social media is still, and, and the funny thing is you have to know which social media platforms are for which age groups, because there are definitely some divisions in the world of social media. Uh, Facebook tends to be the older generations. Uh, Instagram tends to be the younger generations. And then TikTok is the much younger generations. So know your social media platforms and which platforms apply to which age groups. Uh, remember, like we talked about, if you're doing like a VFW type fundraiser, um, that's gonna be an older age group. That's something you're gonna wanna do on Facebook, right? But if you're doing something that's a little bit younger, something more hip, maybe the design and the cause and all that stuff, then maybe you do wanna get on TikTok for that. But regardless, social media is a great place to advertise fundraisers. This is a great place to put it out there. We've got a good example here, actually, this, uh, the screenshot here is something we are using with permission. Um, an example of a fundraiser for somebody who had a baby that was born prematurely. This particular t-shirt shop, a uh, customer of ours was putting together a fundraiser for this premature baby. And the, uh, the uh, benefits here were going towards the parents, I believe. Um, then the family as a whole. So the whole point here is here's the design, great picture to go along with it. And here's the story, pull those heartstrings, get those tears going, right? Show the t-shirt, tell them how to order. 
So in this particular Facebook post, you've got all of that wrapped up into one. We have the story of baby Liam, who was born prematurely. Their family needs some support. So we've told the story. You see the t-shirt, and it is a very cute t-shirt, right? We've got the uh, ribbon there, but we have ribbon, uh, heart-shaped ribbon, which is one of our stock pieces of clip art. And then we've taken some boxing gloves and made those the same color of the ribbon. So very clever. And then the hashtag Team Liam on there. So a, a slick, nice-looking design. Uh, we've got a story and at the very bottom, you've got your link, uh, that they use for purchasing. So great full, full, uh, package there. Right. And that's the whole idea when you're going to use uh, social media like that, tell the story, show the shirt, tell them how to order. Boom, boom, boom. And then we've got the classic. Uh, this this has been around since I, I'm not even going to tell you how many years it's been since I graduated high school. But this this is what we used to see in Benner High School back in the day. You'd get these order forms that would go home with you periodically, and not even high school. I remember getting these in junior high actually. Um, but the whole point is, you can create an order form like this, right? And it's easy to do these days, right? Anybody can do this in, in uh, Microsoft Excel, or you can jump on to any free. Um, uh, 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 spreadsheet software these days, and you can make your own. You can make your own form. So you use our uh, Easy View Online Designer. You use the mock-up section to put together your design. So that's what we've done here. You see Dalton football, and then you see a roster design. And all we did was put these two designs together using the Easy View Online Designer. Then we went to mock-up. We didn't even bother. You can see from the picture, we didn't even bother putting them on a, a person's picture. We just left them plain on a black background because it's going to go on a black T-shirt. And then we downloaded the mock-up and put them, uh, uploaded that JPEG right into my order form. So that you send these home with the kids and you let them choose the color, the size they need, how many pieces, and you've got it clearly displayed. T-shirts are $14, crew necks are 22 each, hoodies are 27 each, your name, um, send the orders to bigredbarn at gmail.com. Here's my credit card info. This is all so simple and so easy breezy. Um, and this is the classic way. It's been around forever, right? So uh, definitely a clever way to do fundraising and and it's cheap too you can blast off a ton of copies of this of this particular uh, order form send them home with all the kids uh, put some in the local grocery store and and these days there are a million places you can leave flyers um, there's a million places you can leave flyers we've got a local antique uh, shop that I go to here in mentor and I was surprised the front door they had a, a table for local local stuff right um, drop a pile of flyers there. So flyers are still a great way. I know we like to get away from paper and it's not environmentally friendly and there's a whole bunch of comments we can make. At the end of the day, you can still make money using the flyer system. Okay, let's talk about profit and price margins for a second because I know some of you wanted to hear this. I know this is what some of you are probably here specifically to hear, okay? I'm going to give you a couple different ideas, and some of these will work for some of you. Some of them won't work for some of you. It all depends on who the fundraiser is for and how you've set it up or what the people are looking for, the charity or whoever you're working for. Um, there's a bunch of different moving pieces here, but one way to do pricing and profit margins is to guarantee a percentage to the cause. OK, so we did a survey with our customers. The average was 10 percent. So what you can do is you can say, hey, um, local children's hospital in my city, I'm going to do a fundraiser and I'm going to push. I've got this really great design for children's hospitals. Uh, and what's going to happen is I'm going to give you 10 percent of the sales. All right. Or maybe it's a different percentage. Maybe you do 15 percent. Maybe you do 8 percent. Whatever the percentage is, a flat percentage of the total sales is one particular strategy, right? And this is where you do the math and you make sure that the percentage you're giving them is feasible for you. Make sure it's not something absurd, right? Because at the end of the day, you still need to make money here too. That's the whole idea. Or you can do a flat rate, all right? You could say that three or four or five dollars of every single t-shirt, three dollars of every t-shirt is going to go to the charity. Right, so that is a valid idea also. Again, this is gonna require you to do your math, do your research ahead of time, take the cost of your shirt, 
the cost of your transfers, figure out what it's costing you, and make sure that you've got enough in there that you can give away that $3 or $4, however much per shirt, plus still make enough money yourself that this is all feasible. All right? Or at the end of the day, you might have a charity, you might have a group that they have a distinct impression of what they want to make. We need to get X amount out of each t-shirt. We need to get X amount out of each donation. Totally fine. We can do that. So you're going to build that donation amount that they're looking for into the cost of the shirt at that point. And when you do your advertising, when you put it out, whether you're doing uh, uh, social media or you're doing flyers, whatever, you can always state that, you know, X amount is going to go directly to the charity. In that case, we're just working backwards. We're starting with the donation amount and then figuring out what the sale amount will be based on that, right? So three different strategies there for you to figure out profit and price margins for fundraiser shirts. Now, I'm sure there's a million other ideas. And if you have a different way, if any of you out there have done some uh, fundraisers already, maybe you have a different way that you've done your profit and price margins, absolutely throw a, a, a question out there and um, pop a, a note into the chat. If you've got some magic way that you do things that you like, that you think is a, a good way to do it, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Oops, sorry, my mouse acting a little weird. There we go. Okay. Uh, so marketing your fundraiser. Let's talk about marketing your fundraiser. So you've gotten a charity. There's a charity you want to work with. You've agreed to do a fundraiser for them. You've agreed on some kind of pricing structure. How do you market the fundraiser, right? So number one, create a video. It is 2023. You have a smartphone. I am sure that 99% of you out there listening right now have a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, you have a video camera. <laughs> so create a video. There is no excuse anymore. It is easier than it ever has been to create videos and to take good pictures and all that good stuff. Um, it is not like it used to be, folks. You do not have to be a professional videographer to do this stuff. So make a video. Even if it's something that you're using the pre-made uh, video layouts and the the pre the the canned video graphics and all that stuff, that's totally fine. Get a video out there. A video is going to allow you to tell the story behind the cause. It's going to allow you to show what cause you're supporting, and then it gives you something to share on social media. It gives people something to watch, right? People will scroll by a picture and maybe the picture is, if it's a good picture and it gets people's attention, then great, more power to you. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, we have to consider the audience. We have to consider what year it is. People are watching videos. You, you have a couple seconds to get somebody's attention as they're scrolling the internet and a video is going to get more attention than a photograph. So create a video. There are tons of resources out there. Use social media. And again, just like I said earlier, know which social media attracts which audiences. Facebook is for an older demographic, baby boomers and the, uh, uh, call it the elder millennials, the people at the beginning of the millennial track, and Gen X, of course, we can't forget Gen X. Those tend to be the people who are on Facebook. Instagram tends to be the younger crowd. So the younger millennials, Gen Z, they tend to use Instagram. And then you've got TikTok. TikTok are the much younger crowd. That's Gen Z and Gen Alpha. Uh, so know who your audience is and use the proper social media. Take fun pictures of people wearing your design. So once you've got, uh, once you've made one or two of the shirts, uh, maybe they're even just demo shirts. They're not even, they, maybe it's a, a cheap tester demo shirt that you had made up. It's not even going to be the exact shirt. Get out there and get some pictures of people in them, right? Make it fun. You have to attract people. So you can't just have somebody standing, do something neat, do something different. Um, and then, uh, so like I said, don't forget, don't forget TikTok. I get it. TikTok can be scary. There's a lot of tools. Putting TikTok videos together can be intimidating. Figure it out. It's not that hard. I promise. Now, there are effects, special effects in TikTok that can be super confusing and take forever to learn. You don't have to use all those effects. You don't have to do all that. You can put together a very simple TikTok video, lickety split just a couple of seconds and it doesn't take any effort. Trust me when I tell you that because I've done it myself. <laughs> I am not a TikToker. I am not somebody that gets into all that, but it is easy to do if you apply yourself. Spend 20, 25 minutes investigating, trying it out, giving it a whirl. You'll screw up a couple times. It's not that bad. 
if your target audience is the younger audience, then it behooves you to do it. All right. And don't forget Twitter too. We can throw Twitter out there. I know, I know it's called X these days, but I don't know. It'll always be Twitter, right? <laughs> so don't forget Twitter too. So this is one too that you need to keep in mind. Know your area. Do you have influencers, local celebrities, local influencers, even if it's not somebody big, like it, it doesn't have to be Brett Favre or it doesn't have to be a famous baseball player, football player. It doesn't have to be a celebrity necessarily, but somebody local, right? A, a great example of this, a great example of this local news station, right? We all watch the news. You've got a local news station. Who in your local news station can you reach out to and say, hey, we're doing this fundraiser for such and such charity for such and such cause i'm making t-shirts can i send you one of the t-shirts and can we get a picture of you in it or can you come out to give us a can you make a video for us or you know this is where you get creative you reach out to that local celebrity that local person somebody identifiable somebody who people know and ask them hey can you help us with this can you do this the worst they're going to say is no thank you it does not hurt to reach out it does not hurt to reach out and think outside the box so when we say local celebrity, I, the news people are just something that comes to my mind. You might have some other kind of local celebrity, right? Maybe you've got a um, maybe you've got a TikToker who's a local person that's recognizable. Maybe you've got a YouTuber in your area that is somebody who's relatively famous online. Um, maybe you do have a local politician or a local uh, sports figure, somebody who you can turn to for this stuff. Um, both good places to go, but. Think of collaborations. Who are some local people, some local celebrities that you can work with who can boost your signal? Limited edition designs. Now this is clever too. If you have a design that you think is really neat, you have something that you think you've, you've got lightning in a bottle, I've got a really cool design, I've got a really cool idea, I can make this t-shirt look really slick, call it limited edition right? Tell people, I'm only making this for X amount of time. And this is honest too. Maybe it, it comes down to ordering 50 transfers. And once those 50 transfers are gone, they're gone. That's it. You know, you're not going to order another 50. I'm not doing it again. I got the nice price break this first time with my one order. So this is it. This is, it's a limited amount, right? So it creates a sense of urgency, tells people that they need to order it right now. And the example here, we've got a clever example from Women's Rights News, limited edition Barbie design, right? And this, this, is, this was a clever idea. Um, so this, I know this is not what the slide's about, but I'll throw this out there too. What's hip right now? So when this fundraiser that you see this picture of, when this fundraiser was done, the Barbie movie was at the height of its popularity with its recent release. Right. So I don't know for those of you who were in the T-shirt industry back when the straight out of Compton, does everyone remember the straight out of Compton movie and how that design was crazy, crazy popular for a hot minute? You saw it everywhere, straight out of Cleveland, straight out of Orlando. Um, we, we saw um, we saw somebody do T-shirts for a baby shower that said straight out of mommy's belly, something like that. So that straight out of was all over the place. So that's part of marketing yourself, too, is having those popular designs, being able to tap into what's popular at the time, doing so in a way that you're not violating copyrights and getting yourself sent letters from lawyers because <laughs> you don't want to do that. That's not fun for anybody, um, but uh, definitely something to think about. So anyway, uh, when it, what we're talking about here for marketing your fundraiser is limited edition, create a design limited uh, call it limited edition you only have a certain number of resources get it while i got it bogo sale marketing your fundraiser via creating a bundle tell people that okay so if you buy a t-shirt you'll get a free sweatshirt or vice versa in this case buy a sweatshirt get a free t-shirt valid on kids and adult t-shirts august 23rd through september 10th perfect that's that's a great deal especially if you have a cool design Right. So create some kind of bundle where not only do you get this great hoodie, but you're going to get a can koozie, too, and you're going to get a mouse pad or what have you. Remember, this is the brilliant thing about transfers. You buy it based on the um, price break. So sometimes what ends up happening is to get the better price break, you end up having to buy like 10, 12, 13 extra pieces. Right. And the best thing about transfers, is you can take those extras and slap them on just about anything. 
put them on some can koozies and some mouse pads, and now you have an instant bundle. <laughs> so not only do you get that great hoodie that you had the idea for, now you get a mouse pad and a can koozie too, or anything else. These are just the ideas that I'm kind of throwing at you here. Um, and gang sheets too. Thank you, helper. Um, the whole idea is you are paying for that whole piece of paper. Fill that paper up. Make a gang sheet. Don't just do the cool full front idea that you came up with. Put some smaller ones on there so you can put them on the sleeves or the yoke on the back of the shirt or, you know, the collar line or someplace. We've done whole webinars about transfer placement. There's all sorts of fun things you can do with small transfers. Um, but create a bundle is the idea. Volume pricing. Get two items for $25, right? Appeal to the people. So when it comes to fulfilling the orders, right? So, okay, I've got my, my marketing down. I've got my fundraiser. We're ready to go. I have orders. Here's some suggestions. If you do need to make a sample shirt, here's the deal. Like maybe you did the mock-up on our website and you've got a real, uh, uh, somebody who's a pain in the neck and they want to see a mock-up, like a uh, t-shirt they can actually feel. The best way to do that, and it's not optimal, but the best way to do that is if you do have to do a sample run, a small run where you got to order like two pieces for somebody, uh, a small number of pieces, you're going to want to order Ultra Color Max. That's going to be the cost effective one if you really have to do a small run. I advise you to avoid that if you possibly can, because that's, that's, you know, going to be expensive to do small runs. But if you can't avoid it, use Ultra Color Max. Make sure to set a deadline. And you have to stick to that deadline. So set a deadline. Tell people. Actually, on that uh, that bundle one that I was just showing you, they did a good job of saying, um, I think it was August 25th to September 10th. Perfect. September 10th was that deadline. Stick to that deadline. Now, if you're going to set a deadline, maybe you want to build in. So if we say, um, like, if maybe we want to be done by September 10th, Maybe we say, okay, well, we want to be done by September 10th. We're going to put the actual deadline on September 11th or September 12th. That builds in an extra day or two for those stragglers. Count your orders and use the chart to decide which product is best. So that chart that I called, uh, that I showed you earlier, um, the chart that uh, showed you how many pieces and, and uh, how many colors, use that chart to determine the most cost-effective transfer type that you should be using. And watch for those price breaks. If you're ordering 22 pieces, there might be a price break at 20. This is all depending on the product, but there might be a price break at 24. Round up to that next price break. Get those extra pieces. Have them on hand. Remember, if, if, that, if the next price break is cheaper, that means you can literally throw out the extras if you wanted to. Go with the price breaks. woo -ah! All right. So we got through a lot of information in 48 minutes. Um, I encourage you to go out there and secure that fundraiser business. Go out there and do it. This is a great way to make yourself a member of the community. This is a great way to show people that you're not just a, a local business that's you know trying to put uh, trying to put money in your pocket, but you also care about the community, right? Um, there's a million different things you can do fundraisers for. There, there's there's all sorts of stuff out there, folks. So get creative. If you have any questions, I will hang out for another minute here. Um, if you have any questions, pop them into the chat box. Otherwise, yes, we recorded this webinar. Yes, you will be able to watch the recording in the near future. You can always call us at 1-800-622-2280. The reps would love to talk to you and answer any questions you have. Info at transferexpress.com will go straight to a professional on our marketing team. So yes, you will get a real human response from somebody who knows what they're doing. Uh, visit us at trade shows, connect with us on social media. We love your suggestions. We love your ideas. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a munch. You're welcome a munch, Crystal. Um, my pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If you have never been to our blog, please take a minute to go to blog.transferexpress.com. Our blog is an award-winning blog. We do constant updates. We are very visual, lots of ideas. And then, of course, transferexpress.com backslash webinars. Um, you, you can watch some of my webinars from 10 years ago since <laughs> we've been doing this for a long time. Um, for school spirit shirts, does the school slash district have to approve use of their logos? Ooh, Gabe, that is a phenomenal question. If you are working with a school, 
if they have provided the design, it's a good bet that they've already approved it. But if you're working with a school and you're making a design, then odds are pretty good they're going to want to see that ahead of time. Now, different districts function differently, Gabe, so I can't tell you across the board. Most of the ones that I have seen, it's not like a school board, like they vote or necessarily. Usually, whoever your teacher advisor is, there's there's somebody on the staff you're working with on your fundraiser, and that person giving approval usually will do the trick. Okay, but different districts are different. It all depends on where the, these things come from. Like if, if you're going to initiate a fundraiser, Gabe, you're going to put together a fundraiser for a school, then yeah, I would want to show maybe not the school board, maybe the principal, right? And that's easy to find principal's information. So I would put something together, show that person if, if you're putting the fundraiser together preemptively for them. Oh, and Sharon brings up a good point here, too. You have to be careful. If you're doing artwork for somebody, that's one thing. But don't ever think that you can just take that artwork then and use it again and again and again for other stuff. Remember that copyright laws can be complicated, folks. So don't get yourself into a craptacular position because you're you know, trying to reuse artwork in some capacity. And I know it stinks. If somebody brings you a really cool design and you're like, oh, my God, that's so great. I can't wait to use that again. Be careful. Don't don't put yourself in a position where you're going to be doing copyright infringement. You don't want that. Um, and I'm not even going to go down that path. That that was a separate webinar we did years ago, and I think that was a good hour and a half. <laughs> so go find that webinar if you want to know more about copyright infringement. But All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will see you next time.